Okay, recording of part four is started. Okay, let's begin then. Hello YouTube, this is my fourth and final installment of my response to Thunderbolt 94's response to my video. Um, at this point, he ups the ante and starts using big, complicated words like empiricism and epistemology. Yeah. Oh. Um, this will be fun. It seems to me that the issue is not whether or not faith is based on evidence. It's a, the, issue, the real issue, as how I understand it, is that it's an issue not on not on faith, but on the issue of epistemology. A lot of atheists, when they're trying to say they're more, they're being rationalist in a debate, when you look at their epistemology, they're not being rationalist, they're being empiricist. That's how I think you're running on things. And you can clarify if I misunderstood your position. But if I understand your position correctly, you're not a rationalist or an empiricist. There is a difference between being a rationalist and an empiricist. Now they're not mutually exclusive. You can you can be rationalist and empiricist, but the mature many atheists who try to say that they're being rationalist, they're real they're in reality are being empiricists. All the atheists I know are both rationalist and empiricist. That is all the atheist I would consider to be rational, obviously. I can't know what's in their head. Uh, I have no problem with being called an empiricist. I am very much that. Now, I'm not an extremist in that regard. I'm not going to ask for empirical evidence that there's not a singularity outside my door. <laughs> Bullshit. Take the, that on faith, confidence faith. Uh, but yeah, I'm an empiricist. If you make a claim, you need to have some form of reliable evidence. Yes, I am an empiricist. I am also a rationalist, regardless of what you think about me. And believe me, your opinion of me, uh, based on this video, I could care so much less than I used to. Before you made this video, uh, you know, I didn't want you to think I was too bad a guy. Uh, now I think that might actually be a good thing. Because... Can you stop it there? Wait, what was that? Can you stop it there? Can I can I just point out that okay, as a as a philosophy graduate, I'd just like to notice that the the use and abuse of the words rationalist and empiricist by him here are getting really really bad. So he he's using rationalist in a very layman, unphilosophical context to refer to anybody who's being rational. But in philosophy, that's not what a rationalist is. And I think, Jacob, you were trying to stay with a, a philosophical definition of rationalist and empiricist. And then he defines an empiricist as what philosophers would define as an evidentialist. Because he says an empiricist is, an, an empiricist is someone who wants some form of evidence. Well, look, that's not what an empiricist is in philosophy. Um, so he's... He's just abusing these two terms, and, and by abusing them, I mean, he's, he's free to define them however the heck he likes, but the problem is he's creating a completely different world of discussion here. So the debate in philosophy between rationalism and empiricism is something that's completely gone over his head, and I think if, if, if you decide you're going to have any further conversations with him, you really need to clarify how he's going to use those terms and how you want to use them because it's very clear to anybody who's done any philosophy that he's not using rationalist and empiricist to refer to uh, the debate in philosophy. Uh, just for the sake of, I guess, assuming that he watches this video uh, for explanation, uh, would you be able to elaborate on that a little more? Like, what is an empiricist uh, per the philosophical definition? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, things get complicated very, very quickly. I mean, the technical definition requires that you know a little bit of philosophy, but an empiricist is someone who's claiming that all of our knowledge, all of our propositional knowledge, is gained through our sense experience in one way or another. The, the difference is a rationalist is claiming that uh, 
much of our knowledge might come that way, but it's possible to have knowledge which doesn't come through the five senses. So in other words, um, well, I mean, the word innate doesn't have to apply directly to a rationalist, but, you know, so for example, a rationalist would say that you could know what justice is without having had an experience of justice from your five senses. But this is where he polarizes the two in a very, very nasty way. Um, I mean, not only does he misuse these two words, but he's kind of suggesting that a rationalist would always think that you have <coughs> to get knowledge through the mind. And that's a mistake as well. Rationalists, only Plato goes that far. None of the other rationalists, like Descartes, Spinoza, for example, they never go that far. All of them accept that there is knowledge that we have through the five senses. But what a classic rationalist does is they say there are also some things that we do know and we can know without having sense experience of them. But no rationalist, apart from Plato, says that all knowledge comes through the mind. So uh, a rationalist is, I think it does, uh, but a rationalist, in other words, is somebody that believes that we can infer certain things without having to directly observe them? Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, through okay. the senses. Observe implies sight. You're right to, to use that, that verb, but I would just say let's not mean sight. It, it means the senses, the five right. senses, traditionally. Uh, my, my apologies. That's cool. What bugs me the most about it, about this part so far, is just this opening thing about you know, um, the, the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt used a lot of big words for this one, and and I'm thinking, is this a and this is a bad thing? Why? Uh, you, you would only say something like that if you thought he, the guy was trying to trick you by using big words. You know, it, it's it seems to me uh, to be uh, a clear sign of somebody who rejects uh, philosophy. Uh, I myself study philosophy as well. Uh, by the way, I have nothing to add to Mike's explanation. It was uh, very precise as far as I know. Um, but uh, even in my church, for example, there are people who reject philosophy and their argument is, well, they use kind of jargon, which is uh, something that laymen could never understand, which I don't completely agree with. But that, that's the same type of argument that he's using, as if uh, being precise with your wording and um, using specific difficult words in his words um, to uh, describe something that is very precise, it's just, it's just normal, at least uh, I believe that's the proper way to discuss. So to, to say uh, he's using big words, as, as you mentioned, uh, as being a, a bad thing, seems to me to be just silly, just seems to be like uh, waving your hands in the, in the air because you don't know anything else to say. Right. But a lot, a lot of people do this. They, they get into theological or philosophical discussions and then they start moaning when you start using very precise terminology. And, it, and it's very ironic, and you're quite right in what you say, Philo, but, you know, if you want to get involved in these discussions, you need to be careful about the language you're using, and you need to be careful not to equivocate, and you need to be careful to say what you mean by them. That's why philosophers have a very good academic reputation, because they use language in very, very specific ways. They're very careful about what they are claiming and they aren't claiming. And if he's going to moan about language, then really he ought to depart from this kind of academic discussion. Right, I would, I would agree with that. And, and his whole video is a clear sign that he is either incapable uh, um, because he d just doesn't know the meanings of the words that he's using, uh, or he's trying to, and I don't mean to be rude, but he's trying to make himself sound intelligent by using big words. But to all people that know the meaning of those words, he seems to, seems to be even more incompetent by using them. Well, I hate to invoke the analogy of Hey Ruka once again, but uh, she released a video at some point um, after addressing me by name, you know, uh, instead of just referring to me as the dude with the hair. But um, she said something along the lines of I don't like to use technical terms because it bores the fuck out of me. Um, the 
problem with, with her saying that is the technical terms make communication as far as science. It, it's a way of clarifying what you mean. It's a way of communicating outside of casual terms in a language that other people in your field will understand. And it also demonstrates an understanding of that field of study. And I would think that that would, you know, extend to general philosophy. Using those big words demonstrates an understanding of, of the topic, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, uh, I used to be a teacher, and, you know, one thing I would tell my kids is, you know, the way you write and also the way you talk shows off your level of education. You know, it has it's not always somebody just trying to be a, a pompous ass. It often is just because the person has a, a fair degree of knowledge in the subject he's, he or she is talking about. Right. And when people bitch about, you know, other people using big words, you know, to me that's, it's tantamount to intellectual laziness. It's like, I want to be a lazy bastard and I'm going to be moaning anybody that isn't. Damn anyone that isn't. Jacob, you know, wasn't, oh, go ahead, man. No, I was done. All right, Jacob, who was that guy that you said, remember we were talking about J.P. Holding and one guy was uh, said that like he looked at, a, at this book that somebody suggested he read and he's like, and uh, and he was like, well, you know, I didn't, I couldn't read the whole no, thing. No, no, it wasn't J.B. Holden. It was Cartesian theist. Oh, my bad. No, no, it was honest techno atheist. Oh yeah, him. I still remember that video he made where he made a video. He, he held up a, 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 I forget the the book. It was one of Richard Swinburne's books. Um, <coughs> he held up the book to the camera and said, I, "I'm not going to read all this. I'm only going to skip through it." <laughs> You actually felt the respect of people for you look down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forget the name of it. Was it the coherence of theism? I can't remember that. Story. Yeah, it, it was. I recommended he get the existence of God. So not only could he not get the right book, but then he made a video explaining why he wasn't going to read the book, having taken the trouble to get it from the library. Brilliant. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. Okay. I've well, that up the... at least a dozen times. Okay, I think we're going a little off topic here. I think we should get back to that. I didn't mean to jump off topic. That's okay. That's all right. I might add one more thing as far as using big technical terms. Just speaking in casual terms kind of gives the impression of a false association. Uh, for example, in anatomy and physiology, you have the pec I'm trying to think of the name here, uh, pectoralis dorsii major. That refers to something specific. Mm -hmm. So there's no confusion as to what you're talking about. Uh, obviously, you have to know what that word means, but if you know what it means, then you know you know what you're talking about. But if you just say chest muscle, that's vague, confusing, and you could technically be talking about any number of muscles. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, just, it, it, it's kind of the same thing in other areas where, you know, it takes some sort of, I guess, intellectual training to get what's going on. And he's trying to go into this without that training and, you know, bemoan anybody that tries to correct him with those technical terms. But he doesn't realize that not using those technical terms leaves vague associations and confusions as to what's going on, as he's clearly demonstrated through his four videos. Mm-hmm. All right, let's continue then. I would, I would post, I will post a link in the description box. You never mentioned, and I, I posted this in my original video to you, you never addressed this. But I'm going to post it again. I would highly recommend you read it. Because it goes into the difference, into the whole classic debate between empiricists and rationalists. This has been going on in philosophical debate, this philosophical circles. That is, what is the best way to gain knowledge, whether it's empiricism or rationalism? I would say I am a rationalist based on the philosophical definition. And I would say you might be working your way towards becoming a rationalist, but you're not there yet. As for which one is better, I think you need to understand that this argument has been going on for almost 3,000 years. And you know what? The only reason that we don't have Greek spaceships flying through space with Greek words on them and colonizing Mars is because way back around the time of the Greek philosophers, 
the philosophers who believed that you can figure anything out just by thinking about it oppressed the philosophers who believed, no, we should test things. The philosophers beat out the scientists. They okay. discredited so them. Wait. And they... What was that, Mike? Okay, on that point, I'd, I'd like him to substantiate that claim. That's all I'm going to say at this point. I'd like him to substantiate it. Because real historians have a real problem differentiating between philosophers and scientists. <coughs> there, were, there were no such group at this time. So what the hell he's talking about, he's making this up as he goes along. I would like to yeah. see some evidence that philosophers as a separate group to scientists actually existed in ancient Greek. Greece, because this is a nonsense. Right, because we're talking about a time when uh, the, the eight, when modern science didn't exist yet. So. Right. Yeah, they were, they were all exactly. what we call polymaths now. They, they, they studied everything. Geometry, mathematics, physics. Aristotle was everything. He yeah, studied not, embryology. Uh, it, 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 there was a lot of other biological things that he studied, I can't list them off the top of my head. Yeah, the only only separation between uh, specific fields of study uh, happened in the early 20th century. I mean, um, people such as uh, C.S. Lewis were um, people who didn't specifically study a field, but they had a very broad field of knowledge, and uh, I completely agree with Mike. When I when I heard this, I was I was actually getting pissed off because he's accusing philosophers uh, of being something that of which there is no proof. Uh, he's claiming something that I have never heard. Um, and like Mike said, there there was no uh, specific group uh, known as the scientists, or could it even be uh, analogous to uh, uh, scientists. Up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone want to like? Okay, I think we're just gonna move on then. He um, strongly discouraged them from continuing along that vein of reasoning. Because of that, they literally set us back maybe two thousand years. If we had start exper- started experimenting at that point, humanity would have been changed as we know it. Oh my god. There's not even a comparison. Yeah, I know you're a rationalist in your mind. I know you think that's better than empiricism. I also know you're wrong. How do I know that? Because empiricism produces things. It puts it up rather than shutting up. Rationalism doesn't. Rationalism without empiricism. Pause, please. Oh, yes. Uh, Just, people were experimenting in the days of ancient Greece, and, you know, I might be off by a few centuries, but I don't think the Greek culture was around long enough, even if it did have some sort of detriment to, you know, scientific progress, to cause that sort of an over-exaggeration and a lack of progress. Just, it's not uh, just that. It, it, it's like he's saying that, that uh, what is it, uh, rationalism is the cause of the detriment of society. That's I don't think he, he's even understanding what I'm meaning by those terms at all. I don't even think he understands, to be completely honest. You know, I mean... You know, the, the, the one thing that, that set us back by more than a, a millennia would have to have been the Dark Ages. But, you know, contrary to what he'd probably say, the Dark Ages wasn't caused by religion per se. It was caused by ancient Rome leaving Europe, pretty much. Or the rest of Europe, I should say. Sorry. Right, because of the fall of the Roman Empire. So Right, right. And... Uh, God, yeah, that, that just, believe- just, for the record, that hurt to hear him say. More than yeah. anyone will ever know. Like, uh, I, I don't just, think we can I have felt this help. sharp, excruciating pain go through my teeth when that hit my ears. <laughs> yeah, I think we can't, we can't uh, add anything to this. This is just completely silly. I mean, it's, it's like, 
Well, I have no words for it. What, what else could you say? I mean, it, you know, like, he owns like, himself. It's right. like, yeah, it's like commenting on, uh, on a little kid saying the sky is blue because it's made of cotton candy. I mean... Really yeah, cotton, where, cotton. where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to continue now then. Yeah. Because I pretty much agree with most of what you're saying. So. This is empiricism. This desk uh, is made out of wood. It doesn't count. This is empiricism. Us talking right now is empiricism. No one figured this shit out just by thinking about it. Your life is preserved because of empiricism. Rationality alone by the way, this isn't just about empiricism and rationality. What we're talking about is the difference between science and philosophy. Now we need pause. What? The core of science is a branch of philosophy. Yes, it is. It, it was born out of methodological naturalism. Yeah, the philosophy is what fueled the modern scientific movement. Yeah, and without philosophy, even if you're intelligent enough to collect data in the first place, you can't come up with any sort of reasonable or rational conclusion for that data. I mean, you might as well have just said, what the hell is I doing again? What the hell is this scalpel in my hand? Yeah, I, I, I made this point in my video series on Stephen Hawking uh, in his episode on the Discovery Channel uh, show, um, where, you know, without philosophy, there is no basis for science as we know it the only thing science could do is simply say look that's what happens that's all it could do it couldn't do anything else so uh, i think that he, he really underappreciates the uh, human uh, intellect for thinking right. So, right. And, to, and to retaliate uh, is if if we didn't have philosophy we wouldn't be able to use science to begin with Right, exactly. because a lot of the early scientific discoveries were made by those same Greek and Roman philosophers. This, this reminds me of that, you know, that scene from Robin Hood, Men in Tights, where Blinken, the blind dude's up on the lookout tower, and Robin looks up, it's like, Blinken, what are you doing up there? Guessing? I oh, guess no one's coming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue then, because I don't think, I, I don't have anything else to add here of science is empiricism. The core of philosophy is rationality. They're not comparable in that way, but if we had to pick one, empiricism actually produces results. Rationality, I'm not going to say it doesn't produce results, but there, there's no comparison when it comes to figuring new things out. Uh, I'm sorry, empiricism wins. It won the... Pause, it pause, it pause. pause. Yeah, his, his argument, his first argument was that empiricism is this glorious thing that causes everything. And then, continuing on, he, he trips over things that he thinks, oh shit, th this could also be true. And then uh, his whole argument just falls apart. And it just, he just notices it. Uh, Excuse me, I'm, my, my tongue is tied. He just noticed his own mistake, and his argument just fails. He just knows it. I, I can't facepalm this just because I think I'm going to, you know, drop myself into a coma or a concussion or something. I'm, I'm at the very least going to crack the skull, but, you know... It, <laughs> science is based on, on strictly empiricism, but not rationalism. What the hell do you call formulating a hypothesis? Well, what do you call empiricism? I mean, if you're going to say uh, philosophy uh, is useless and empiricism is true, I could just simply say, well, what is empiricism? And once he gives an answer, he said, well, he just proved my point. He's using philosophy. He's using philosophy to make his point that philosophy is actually nothing. It's just, it just, it's just pointless. Right. This is what, where this is why we have epistemology. You don't have a proper epistemology. There's no way you can even have these kind of discussions about whether which is more reliable is empiricism or rational rationalism you know it's like you're pretty much shooting yourself in the foot when you make this claim pretty much i mean and without philosophy there is no scientific method i mean just even thinking about it in a step-like fashion 
you don't have a hypothesis, there's nothing to base an experiment upon, and there's nothing to draw conclusions about. In fact, there's no way to draw conclusions in the first place. Right. All right. We're so, I mean, it, it's just... It, uh. mm -hmm. All right. Let's continue, then. To go. The only people holding desperately on to ration... Uh, desperately onto the idea that rationality is superior to empiricism or religious. Okay, even if that was true, how is that relevant? And it's not and it's not even true in the respect that rationality and empiricism actually can go hand in hand. Uh-huh. Like so I agree. it makes a distinction that that's not really there. You just but that that's that's just simply due, I think everybody can agree with that. That's just simply due to his ignorance about the terms. He just doesn't understand it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, let's continue then. Philosophers, or at least those who lean more towards the religious set mindset. Because I say, rash, I, I believe rationalism is a better way of gaining knowledge than empiricism. Not, not to say that empiricism is a bad thing. Well, considering you wouldn't be able to say that at all for several reasons. One, you probably wouldn't have survived uh, without empiricism. Two, you're speaking into a uh, microphone that was not made by re with rationality. They didn't think. Hmm, I wonder if we could say no. They yeah, because they yes. just fucking built the thing and they didn't think about it. Empiricism. Uh, it's probably a good thing that you don't say empiricism is bad, because it would make you look kind of silly. But if I were to put myself, if I were to define my epistemology as of this video, I would say I lean heavily towards rationalism. That, like, a famous example of a rationalist would be Immanuel Kant. I made a mistake there, and Boy Ethan Aculite pointed that out, so just wanted to point that out as well. That's fine. Yeah. That was a baby. Yeah, no, my bad. So. And he was a yeah. he, he was one of the proponents of rational. I made a mistake there. Oops. Rationalism isn't strictly an atheist thing. It's an actual epistemological position. I never claimed it was, and again, I clarified <coughs> this in another video that apparently you did not watch. In this particular instance, in this one issue issue of theism and atheism empiricism is the way to go yeah but and if God mean? is beyond the natural universe you can't use empiricism no yeah it's, it's just he, he's using a method that is too restricted to come to a knowledge of something that could possibly exist. Because when I'm talking about when I'm talking about epistemology here, I'm not saying I've never said that empiricism was a bad thing. I'm talking about epistemol epistemolo bleh, sorry. The, the epistemology of how we can keep our foundations for gaining knowledge. It, it, and I would say, and this is my opinion, you can disagree, I would say rationalism is a better epistemological foundation than empiricism. That's that's all I was saying there. Not not only right, that, right. He's, he's assuming a lot to say that you never, you don't watch his videos. And I'm I'm hard pressed. He made a lot of videos, like not just to me, but to both Rational Roundtable and Insta Superfly. So, oh. what was I supposed to do? So, let's continue. Theists are reaching their conclusions. Still aren't even rational. Sorry, they're not. It doesn't work because it's based on revealed knowledge. Revealed knowledge is one of the things that rationalism argues against. I don't care about Immanuel Kant, so what I will say is um, if he wasn't an empiricist at all, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Just so, pause it right quick. What? Okay, if that's really just, that, 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 he really sh that, that's, that's not even right just to throw out Emmanuel Kant just oh I don't care about him and just throw him out. I mean, you don't do that when you when you when you're having an argument or you know when you're having a philosophical argument. You don't just say I don't well, care. It, about him. Throw, throw to be around. honest, it's it's a clear sign of intellectual laziness. Though though uh, um, Jacob made a mistake there. Um, I mean, 
if, if you give something, uh, so, someone something to read to uh, clarify your position, or in this case, to uh, give authority to your argument by giving somebody who has authority as a source, and you simply reject them out of hand, that's a clear sign of intellectual laziness, or a simple sign of uh, closed-mindedness, but I think those two go hand in hand, to be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think at the very least, you should have, you know, followed up and, you know, said, well, hey, you made a mistake here. <coughs> right, he was a goal. Well, that, that would have shown that he, he did the research. Exactly. It's like that, it's not the whole series that he, he's just he's not really interested in, in giving a substantive argument he just he just seems to be venting but you know that, that, that'll probably come with the conclusion right. pretty much it, it's I'm right you're wrong and I'm not gonna pay attention to anything you say yeah, it's exactly like I had said earlier remember guys <laughs> yeah yeah it's like the medieval Catholic Church I'm sorry Jacob but in some respects they they did simply say, well, we think this well, is I'm not true. Denying. <laughs> I'm not denying there were some problems in the church there in that time. Exactly. Well, well that's, that's, that's the point I'm making. And I, I think that um, uh, though the church has changed a lot now, but um, I, I don't want to talk about that. I want to finish the point <laughs> of the video. <laughs> so continue on. Jay. All right, let's continue. Where, hold on. If he wasn't an empiricist at all, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Sorry, but rationalism alone was defeated thousands of years ago. Hence me talking to you on this computer. Now, um, before I end this video, I want to address that one last thing you, that you brought up at the end of your video. Is that you mentioned the prophecy of Isaiah 714. And that when it that actually translates to young woman or young maid, I'm not sure why you brought this up to begin with because I never once mentioned anything about that prophecy, and I never and it's not even part of our discussion to begin with. So I don't know why you brought this up anyway. You know, that's the second time. No, the third time. You seem to show confusion when I brought up when I presented an example of the type of thing I was talking about. Um, I didn't know we weren't allowed to use examples. I didn't know that that necessarily means we had to delve deeply into those details. The problem was, is that he went from one point, and then he went to another point without, like, giving like giving an explanation as, as, as to how the two points were related. So, it's like he, he brought this point completely out of nowhere. So, what was I supposed to do? You know? Well, I believe that most of his, his points are just out of the blue, and uh, there's no, it doesn't seem to be a, a real structure in in his argumentation. Um, to be honest, the longer we spend on, on the, these videos, the more confused I am about what he's actually trying to say. All right. Let's see, let's try and finish this real quick. What's that? Did someone say something? No, there was just a bit of feedback from somebody, but I don't know where it's from. Okay. Might have been me, I scratched my head. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's continue then. Um, I was just using a few examples. Uh, the reason I brought that up is... I don't actually remember, but let's go on. Now, you try to say that, well, I'm wrong about the bit being virgin when it really means young woman and all that stuff when I never really said it did I never made that argument and uh, the, and to bring it and to make it very clear yes it does mean young woman I already knew that I never said it meant virgin it's not a big secret with, with the biblical scholarship that it means young woman or young maiden I don't know why he even brought that up to begin with. So it doesn't pose a question. It doesn't pose a problem at all for Christian theology. So it's only a problem for like the hardcore fun fundamentalists, but it's not a problem at all for Christianity. So I'm not sure why he brought that up to begin with. One, I brought it up, I remember now, because you're Catholic. Isn't the Virgin Mary a huge and important part of Catholic? 
Catholic theology. Now, I might not know all the different types of Catholic, and I know this is probably the one point you focus on most if you make a response, that you don't know Catholic theology, whatever. I only brought that up because that seems to be something Catholics are ignoring, you know, venerating the Virgin Mary. I'm sorry, she probably wasn't a virgin. Oh, is it? The whole Wait. story probably did. What's that? Wait a second. Oh he's he's you now he's just making a lot of a lot of presumptions there. I mean, right? So he's saying that because in Hebrew, Isaiah seven fourteen refers to a young woman. That means that Mary was not a virgin, right? That's what he's basically saying. Sounds like it. Yeah. He said that she might not have been a virgin. But. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Well, it seems to me another um, example of trying to move on the argument uh, because uh, I have no good refute or no good rebuttal to your previous points. Um, it is trying to explain to uh, a 12 year old that just uh, had his first mathematical or math class, uh, trying to explain to him uh, the complexities of quantum physics. Um, of course, it's not that uh, big, uh, not that big a difference, uh, but still, it's trying to uh, he's trying to appeal to another thing he he thinks is inconsistent. But you can't really address it until he uh, accepts the, even the basics, such as there is the theistic God that could, if he wanted to, interact in the world. And if that is possible, then it seems to me very possible that Mary was a virgin and that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. But, if, know, I might, if I might add something, you know, that whole reference in Isaiah, uh, regardless of whether, you know, you believe it, actually was a prophecy that came true. The reference in Isaiah doesn't say anything about whether the woman is a virgin or not. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's where things get difficult. Um, the, the Hebrew word there is Alma, and it, it can be trans... It, it's quite a wide word. It can mean maiden, young woman, or, or it can mean virgin. So what his complaint is, is that in Matthew, in the Greek, it uses the word parthenos, which is a little narrower than Alma, and it does mean just virgin. It, it, it becomes a very interesting thing, because Matthew's quoting clearly from the Greek translation of the Old Testament, which is called the Subtuagin. Uh, but, the, but the point is really a moot one that he's making, because a lot of scholars point out that the Septuagint is just translating in a slightly narrower way. So actually the Hebrew word can be read as maiden, young woman, or virgin. And so the it's a, it's a complete red herring, the whole thing. I, I agree with that. And I mean, at worst, it, at the absolute worst, that might represent a sort of mistranslation, possibly, if you wanted to stick with the young woman translation. That would, yeah, that would be the... That's the kind of accusation that's that the, I'm that, that's the worst thing you could possibly say about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, just kind of removing my own personal opinions from it, you know, that, that doesn't do anything to the truth value of you know the mythos of Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, using right. mythos in the least pejorative sense as I possibly can, by the way. Oh, I understand what you meant by that. So, like, thank you, Jacob. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, I, I love that you're you know. You never get offended at some of the, the stupid things that come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the whole deal, and I'm looking something up right quick. I happen to have my uh, my little trusty uh, Bible app on my cell phone. I was, I was, oh, for the love of God. Oh, man, this stupid thing can't communicate with this. I, 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 you can help me out with this, Jacob. It wasn't that, didn't they refer to the birth, virgin birth in the, in, the, uh, in the New Testament whenever they talked about Jesus' birth? I forget to the uh, prophecy of older virgins. I forget off the top of my head. So. Oh well, that's okay. It's, 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 it's not here nor there. Go on ahead. All right, let's continue. How much time Probably is left done. on this video? What's that? How much time is left on this video? Um, this video is about nine, eight more minutes. Okay. We're almost done. Oh. Nah.
Jesus probably existed, but you can clearly see. It's a huge problem for Christian theology. Uh, because you can see. What's that? Stop. Uh, it's just a, it's, come on. Yeah, but stop, stop, stop. Uh, I'd like to say something. All right. Just, just a, an observation, and I believe that most of you uh, recognize it, but it just, I just want uh, Esplin, if he's watching this video, to know. Um, you notice that he's trying to make a bigger claim, and then in the middle of making his claim, he stops and then changes the claim. As you can see, I'm not saying that, that he is actually making that claim, but it does show... Uh, uh, kind of position of, you know, he believes things to be worse than they are for Christianity. Plus he's and exaggerating that, a little bit, you know, a little yeah, bit. Exactly. He either <laughs> believes it's, it's actually that bad, and then considers, well, maybe it's not that bad, or I should not make such a ground claim, because maybe people will call me on it and I have to prove it, or it's something else. But I just wanted to point it out that that's very strange, and it's, uh, it's weird for somebody to do that, in my opinion. It's, it's not strange at all if he's ex exhibiting, as we'd say, intellectual laziness. Mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he's making these big, grandiose claims, and really is not getting... And, and, well, the big uh, thing that you notice is that everything that he has given, he has never once said a word that backs any of it up. He's no. just yeah, and he's not giving any references, at least not that I know. Right. Yeah, he's just giving a litany of assertions. Mm-hmm. All right. And appeals to his own authority, which is obviously uh, improper, because he's not an authority. Mm-hmm. All right, let's continue then. Many virgin gifts from many older religions made its way into pretty much every theology. They all mix. They all share certain commonalities. Now, am I saying that um, Christianity is based off of the Greek? You know, I think it was Perseus who was born of a virgin or a divine birth or whatever. No, I'm saying perhaps they all had a common ancestor. It's a common cultural meme. So, yeah, that is a problem for Christianity. You say it's only parent. Stop, stop. <laughs> What is this sudden <laughs> reference of memes? I mean, uh, even the belief in memes might be a meme, so it's self-refuting. It, it's just silly that he makes these points. Uh, it also seems like he's referring to some kind of uh, uh, zeitgeist, uh, the 16 crucified saviors of the world type. I don't think uh, he was intending to a zeitgeist, because he said he doesn't support zeitgeist, if I remember correctly. Well, he's, well he sure as hell just made a... a, a, a a, um, uh, he made the same claim. An assertion that's straight out of Zeitgeist. Yeah, he made the same claim. Well, not the, the complete claim that Zeitgeist makes, but he, he made a claim that Zeitgeist makes as well. That there are any such um, uh, miraculous, uh, supernatural virgin births um, uh, in history, of which that's not really true, at least as far as I done the research, that doesn't seem to me to be at all the case, and he has to prove it, and he has the burden of proof here. By the way, Perseus wasn't born of a virgin, Perseus was born of a lady in Zeus. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just I think he's thinking of uh, Mithra or Mithras. Yeah, I think that might be the one that you're talking about, and J.P. Holding did a series of videos about Mithras that pretty much debunks that. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's continue. We're almost done. Actually, actually, if I might add just one thing. Okay. Um, even if there are certain parallels or commonalities between the stories or something like that, again, it doesn't disprove any of them, and it doesn't prove that you know there's a common source for all of them. Right. Uh, uh, correlation that... doesn't equate to causation. Right. That's that's something C.S. Lewis wrote wrote in one of his books. I forget which book he, he wrote it in, but he did make make that point. So. Exactly. I think it's the book um, Myth uh, Become True, something like that, or at least that that's really the... It was something like that. But he actually lived under the uh, belief that there were actually uh, other 
saviors uh, in the past that were very very similar to to uh, Christ, and he actually made an argument that even if that were the case, um, there is more proof, and there is uh, absolute. Well, there is very good reason to believe that um, um, the Christian story is true. Right. right. Not only that, but. You think about what Nicodemus told the Sanhedrin when they were conspiring on what to do about Jesus. And he's told them, to, you know, he's the one who stepped forward and told them to be careful what you do. Because he said that, you know, remember, you know, this person, you know, who, you know, who a lot of people followed, thought he was supposed to be the Christ. And his followers were, 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 uh, were brought to naught. You know, he was destroyed and his followers brought to naught. And this person and his followers were destroyed and brought to naught. To not. And then, so he referred to Jesus. And, you know, and you know how that whole thing turned out. Uh, the other thing is that when you compare these different life, der life, death, rebirth deities, there's often a lot more different in the story than there is um, similar. Uh, for example, Mithras has the, the Tarotony, where he killed the bull with the help of his animal friends. Last time I checked, you know, neither you know Jesus Christ nor uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Uh, 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 Osiris. <coughs> yeah, ne neither Osiris or uh, Jesus did anything like that, to the best of my knowledge, anyway. Plus, Jesus, like Osiris, wasn't chopped up into a bunch of pieces, thrown into the Nile, and taped back together by his wife. Except for the, except for his penis. <laughs> With the exception of his penis. <laughs> As foot to the best of my knowledge, Jesus' penis was still very much intact. <laughs> All right, let's continue. I think we've done enough on this point. I don't understand how even you, you know the biblical. Uh, I don't know what to call them, relativists. I guess what, what I don't understand is how far they go in the other direction. Any time something is shown not to be the case, it's like. Well, the gist of the story. No, that is an incredibly important thing, especially in Catholicism. No, 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 no. Let me clarify a couple things. Virgin birth is a is a is an almost universal belief in all of Christendom. He's confusing the virgin birth, the immaculate conception, and perpetual virginity. It's like this is not. Okay, ignoring Immaculate Conception and Perpetual Virginia for, for now, the virgin birth is not just a Catholic doctrine. It is a Christian doctrine that, that Orthodox and Protestants share. Yeah, but I think also just, just for clarification, because uh, I used to have a wrong concept of Immaculate Conception. This Immaculate Conception would... Conception, excuse me would be concerning Mary, and immaculate means without sin. Right. Okay, yeah, just to be sure. Right. right. It, just, it, just, it just makes the claim that G that when Mary was born, she was born without a state of original sin on her, so she can give birth to the Savior. That's just the Catholic claim. But even if you disagree with that doctrine, that has no bearing whatsoever on the virgin birth the theology. You know? Exactly. No. Let's keep you up. Let's continue then. Right, hold on. You too, uh, You have a whole theology based off of the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin, and the original prophecy, it's not a virgin. It's other we are concepts a got mixed in with that. So even if you look at the oldest Jewish documents, what we do have shows that the closer it got to Jesus' time, little by little, not as gradualistic, but at some point, the uh, Hebrew word that meant young maiden started to be the Hebrew word that meant young maiden, but could also be virgin. And by the time um, the first gospel writer got to it, he translated it as virgin. That's a big thing. It shows that... It at least shows that... He's claiming conspiracy theory here, which he has to prove. Right. Like, let's... let's it's like... Not, not to mention the fault the fact that it's patently, it's patently untrue. I mean, any any scholar of Hebrew language knows that word mean, can mean virgin. 
you know? Well, not only that, yeah, but he's I, claiming that the word in the Hebrew text was changed over time, which is false. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, and of course, if we look at the Jewish uh, culture, a young woman would, uh, I, I assume, yeah, probably, I might be wrong, but uh, an unmarried woman, and it would be it would be unbelievable if that woman, uh, if she was unmarried, was not still a virgin. Not Agreed. necessarily. I mean, yeah, I. I there is a higher, her, her, a much higher probability of that time period of the woman not being a virgin. Uh, I, I right, grant I, you I think that. That. Was the, that. The point, though. But even that, even that with the case, it's not relevant to the, to the topic we're discussing, you know? Alright, I'm going to continue. Hold on. God's put something there. You know why it's irrelevant? I was showing you that the core concepts of Christianity have little evidence that can at least, at least be shown to be fabrications to make it fit with the original text. Consider this. Say I... Pause it. Wait, what was that? Pause it. Uh, philosopher, uh, adjust your mic or speakers, please, because it's reverbing from, from you. Alright, we're almost done. We have uh, four more minutes. Okay. Four or five more minutes. Right. Oh, by the way, um, that whole thing we was talking about, the, uh, the scripture about the birth, virgin can self, shall conceive and give birth. Okay, the, uh, I believe that that, that scripture was uh, in Isaiah, if I'm remembering right. And um, I said Isaiah 7, 14. Yeah, and in Matthew 1, 23, 22 and 23, it said, uh, well, hold on, let me go start in verse 21. And she shall bring forth the son, and that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with the child, and it shall bring forth the son, and it shall call him his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Okay, so the, uh, the, the writer of Matthew, <coughs> well, uh, Matthew found it necessary to refer to that, to that scripture because he knew that that verse meant virgin. Yeah? Well, and the Septuagint uses a word which means virgin. Yeah. And the author of Matthew used the Septuagint. Mm-hmm. Right. And okay, let's continue. Or say I make a prophecy, right? And I write it down. And someone else is trying to con people into thinking that that prophecy came true. Now, there's another prophecy or stories that talk about. Um, something else well he's writing about the past talking about how this prophecy comes true and he accidentally incorporates that other thing into the prophecy that I made now doesn't that say something about his willingness to make his writings fit with my prophecy you can see that he added something that he thought was part of the original prophecy to his new writings. That's the point it's trying to make. You're saying that the Gospels are legitimate evidence. Well, this is serious evidence that casts doubt on that. On the fact that you can desperately see the later Gospel writers trying to make Jesus fulfill all the prophecies, and he just doesn't. He fails because he's not magic. Neither were the Jews who made the prophecies. Okay, he's really going to have to prove that because he really didn't do a very good job of it at all. Let's assume for the sake of the argument that he's correct in in terms of the the author of Matthew using Septuagint and that he mistranslated that that word in the Hebrew. Let's assume that's true for the sake of the argument, which I agree it's true, but let's, let's assume for the sake of the argument it's true. How does that support his argument? I don't think it really does. I think he's just, you know, changing the subject because he, again, as somebody else pointed out earlier, he didn't have a good enough rebuttal to your other claims. 
Mm-hmm. That, and I kind of think he's picking at you because you're Catholic, which, again, is kind of tantamount to a sort of subtle ad hom, I guess. That's true. Mm. Now let's continue, then. We're almost done. Point I was trying to make. I said that, whereas I probably wouldn't with the Protestant, not because of how biblical, how much of a biblical inerrantist you are, but because you are Catholic. As far this as I'm aware, stop. that's a huge part of that? Catholics. Can you stop? Yeah, what's that? So he, he said that he would not bring up this issue with the Protestant, right? Right. Does he not believe, or does he not know that Protestants believe that Mary was a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus? Yeah, exactly. That's like, a, like yeah. That's like, yeah. <laughs> that that seems to follow. Yeah, I agree. As as Spock would say, his logic is sound. Ram, <laughs> 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 uh, like, is that? Mm-hmm. I think this. I think this will cause a Vulcan to want to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Theology. Uh, you might not be in that particular part that, that considers the Virgin Mary important. But sue me for not knowing your particular sect. <laughs> what, what does his sect have to do with anything? How about sue you for not knowing Christian doctrine in general? Mm-hmm. If you think that uh, the majority of Christians uh, don't believe that Mary was a virgin, or that Protestants don't believe that, it's like it's not that he doesn't know Catholicism; it's that he doesn't know um, well, the Christian is, beliefs that he claims he does. It okay. seems more like he's saying, "Well, sue me if I don't attack your specific position, but rather attack straw men." That's actually, that to me, sounds like what he's saying. I'm sorry I don't know your exact position, so I'll just attack straw men. Okay, I just realized that that's the end of his response, so I think we're pretty much done with that part. But if anyone has any other points, feel free. I, I, I do, actually. Okay. In a video that he made to It's the Superfly, he uh, said something about wanting to become a biblical anthropologist. Would it be uh, uncalled for if I said that, you know, perhaps there's a reason that he tried and isn't one right now? Hmm. Wait, he said that he tried to become a biblical anthropologist? He, he wanted to be an apologist. He wanted to become an apologetic. he doesn't know that Protestants believe in the virgin birth. Right. And th- th- there's just kind of this thought in my mind that... He's not a biblical anthropologist right now, not because he's done with his studies, but because he flunked. Well, I, I wouldn't go off on a tangent like that myself. But, um, why? Um, but, you know, I, I, I just don't. <laughs> I mean, if he. If it, I'll just say it like this either he'll. If he is going into stuff like that. Then I think that a lot of things that he's going to learn in school is going to rock his world, and he'll come up a different man for it, or he will end up staying, keeping you know his his mindset, which really, in my personal opinion, is very immature and very ignorant, and and will end up failing. Mm-hmm. Right. At the very least, I think it's indicative of him just starting his studies and then. Assuming that he already knows more than he actually does. Well, perhaps further study would uh, bring a little humility? I, I would agree with that. In fact, I can speak from personal experience that, you know, that would actually work. I mean, before going to college, I thought, you know, I knew all there was to know about things like evolution or abiogenesis. I mean, I knew I was still ignorant about certain things, but I thought I knew all I needed to know. And then when I actually started going to college and taking the biology courses, there was so much that that actually changed about my perception. I became woefully aware of the shadow of my own ignorance, as it were. 
and I think that most people could uh, could agree with that, even within uh, I, I myself uh, study philosophy, and if I think back uh, a couple of years ago, I, I knew absolutely nothing. Uh, well, not anything uh, that that ra- random people uh, um, would also not know. Is that a correct sentence? Doesn't really matter. The point is that uh, I, for example, uh, would not make grandiose claims about. Um, the theology, because though I'm a Christian, uh, my knowledge of theology is but of a layman and not more than than that. And um, yeah, if if Esplin wants to have this, which it is really a philosophical discussion, he has to avail himself of some uh, um, knowledge. understanding of the terminology and like and the and the exact literature on it. Exactly. Otherwise, he's just gonna he's just gonna use words in a way which will make it for you, Jacob, and for any of us impossible to discuss with him anything of this this nature that we've been discussing here. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that I, I, what was that? It, it's oh, reverb so. from philosopher okay. again. Okay, I think that's about it now. But does anyone want? Do we want to make any concluding statements? It's, or ask any questions directly to yeah. Esplan. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that he watches this, um, watches this, and, and 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 maybe understands that when he sees several Christians, theists, and atheists standing together and saying, "Dude, you are completely wrong here," then maybe it will get and show him reasons why. And actually, did it in analyzing in depth these four, these three videos, then maybe he will stop to think. Because I mean, it, it's one thing to argue with a few people on YouTube, but when you have a group of people get together and really, you know, kind of, you know, you know I, I don't know how to really kind of, you know, do a concentrated effort to say, "Wake up, sir." Not only that, but when we when we have a group of people, like my people, who are going who are together, going through these videos point by point to address where what mistakes he made in his reasoning, you know, right? You know, maybe he'll stop to think. Well, one can certainly hope. I mean, mm-hmm. at, at the very least, you know, I. I <sighs> I mean, I just kind, wish, kind of brain farting here. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I, I just wish he were here because I know Jacob even said that he had, he had mentioned wanting to come, but he never did. Obviously. No, he has work today. Yeah. He's working. I, I think that, that there are a couple of things that <coughs> I quickly want to mention on which um, he. Well, I'll, I'll explain. The, fir- the first thing is. Um, is that uh, I've really noticed, and he's also mentioned this himself, I believe, not in this video, but in another video of which you, Jacob, uh, cut something off and put it in your video, that's why I saw it, that he has a problem with uh, aggression uh, concerning uh, a discussion like this. And, uh, I mean, everybody has seen the video and can see that uh, this, this man truly struggles with uh, emotional outbursts concerning um, uh, the discussion that we've been having. I think that that's something that he really has to um, think about, and if, if it really brings him to that point, uh, I don't think that's healthy, and uh, it, it will be a detriment to uh, bringing any uh, progress in, in what he's thinking. The second thing is, is that his argumentation has to be improved by a lot. Um, he should not simply appeal to his own knowledge. He should not, uh, or his own authority. He should not uh, throw throw out uh, um, sources and or uh, authorities provided by other people. Not uh, only, not only that. I don't mean in our group. But only, not only that. Like in the description box of both my videos, I listed sources, and I made it clear that I would, I really would like for him to have gone through all the sources I posted in there. Before he sat down and made a video response to me, 
you know? Actually address the sources I've brought to the table. Actually, I, I do have one thing to add, maybe a couple of things. Philosopher, do me a favor. Just uh, mute your so, mic so, so. until you're ready to talk. Because the reverb is, it started a few minutes ago. All right. Thank you. Uh, in, anyways, I've actually brought this up when talking about the philosophy of science. Um, and I'll tie this into what we're talking about here. But to have an appreciation for the explanatory power of science, to have an appreciation for its a ability to objectively explain certain phenomena about the natural universe, you have to have an understanding of its limitations, what it can't demonstrate, what it can't observe, what it can't test upon, what it can't comment on. The existence of God is one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so likewise, I mean, for him to have any sort of real appreciation for his own epistemology, he has to understand what the limitations of that epistemology are. Right. You know, other, otherwise, it pretty much destroys any uh, ability to explain anything. Right. It, it destroys his, his ability to really, I, I guess, comment on anything. Mm hmm. That's because right. there's no understanding of what it can or can't do. Right. If you don't understand your own epistemology, there's no way you can have, have, have a discussion about what we can discuss as to what is knowledge, you know? Right. Another thing he needs to do is to stop, you know, present, he needs to learn how to present an argument. And I'm hoping that this video actually uh, helps him in, in, in doing that. To see that we presented our arguments not only with words and, and assertions, but also proof. You know, we were able to look at his arguments and show exactly why they don't hold water. You know, and instead of just saying, I'm right, you're wrong. You know? Right. And he I'm needs to understand that his opinions are just that, opinions. They're not solid facts. And again, skepticism or doubt is not tantamount to this proof. There's still that possibility that he could be wrong. Even as an atheist, I still have an appreciation for the fact that there is some chance, however small I believe it to be, that I could be wrong on the whole God debate. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and I, you know, understand that my, the conclusion that I've come to is just an opinion that I've come to. So I don't really hold to that with any level of certainty. I can't say I know whether or not God exists. I can tell you what I think, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and if he were to kind of come to that sort of understanding, you know, it's not enough to just call bullshit or to label someone an idiot. You know? It's... If you do that and just leave it at that, I mean, you really haven't done anything. Anyone have and, other thoughts? And I step off the soapbox. <laughs> I think... Yeah, I think we I said think what needed to be said. Philosopher. That's true. Uh, well, I just wanted to, uh, oh, okay. I, I was speaking when my mic was muted, <laughs> I wanted to agree with Will that ridicule just is, does not belong in uh, uh, any discussion, really, and um, it, it's just, uh, this this kind of uh, ridicule, like um, ridiculing your pronunciation of specific, or uh, your use of big words, those things uh, just really stop the uh, conversation, especially in this video, whenever uh, uh, I can imagine uh, somebody who really enjoys Espen's videos, uh, watching the video and then Espen making a joke like that, um, he will be, you know, mentally stumbling because he thought that was funny, but not really paying attention to the point of the video, and, and that might mean that videos that address these specific issues might be very boring, but they are not entertaining in, in the sense of an amusing one, uh, but they are supposed to be informative, and if he wants to be funny, uh, make, just talk about something else, really. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't really comment on the whole ridicule thing. Um, uh, yeah, mute again, please, philosopher. Thank you. I, I can't really comment.
comment on the whole ridicule thing, but I can at the very least say this. When I call people things like cupcake, sunshine, or, you know, call them a moron, the way that I do it is, you're wrong for reasons X, Y, and Z, you moron. It's not, you're a moron, therefore you're wrong, or you're insane, therefore you're wrong. That, that's, there, there's no intellectual way to doing that. Right, and that makes sense. That makes that makes complete sense because you're not insulting them because of they're just you just disagree with them. You're insulting them because they got this 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 wrong, and you're explaining your reasons. Right. right. If you're going up against somebody who's interested in a dialogue and is actually interested in learning something, then you just don't insult them. But if you're arguing with somebody that has no interest in changing their mind, I don't think there's anything wrong with insulting them. But you don't make the insults the main point, or even the argument. You know, you tack it on at the end as something like a, an irrelevant part of the sentence or something like that, separated from the verbs and nouns, as it were, for one of a better description. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, that whole tirade in his very first video, though amusing, was completely unnecessary. I mean, when you got to resort to that level of... I will give him credit, of, that... that bizarre cooking analogy was clever. I will give him that, so, but yeah. it was completely unnecessary. But the thing about it is that he needs to understand when you resort to tactics like that, uh, character assassinations, name calling, such and such, um, especially at the very beginning, you know, like that, and you spend, how many minutes long was that first video? It was like six minutes. Yeah, six minutes on a tirade like that, I'm sorry. It, you, as the as it as the uh, the colloquialism goes, you lost the game. Right. It's a sign that you have already lost the game, and you lost it before you even played it. You know. Right. My philosophy on the subject, no pun intended, if there was one, um, is if all you've got is, is insults from the onset, you've already been pwned. Mm -hmm. And if at some point towards the end of the discussion or the middle of this discussion, that's all you've got, you're pwned. Plain and simple. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't, the, um, doing, you know, throwing a tirade of, of character assassinations and, and little witty remarks uh, akin to a wrong sandwich does not make you intelligent. It makes you look like a douchebag. I'm sorry I have it, but it's true. And we're not saying this because we're being, we're trying to be dicks. We're just trying to, we're saying this as constructive criticism of how you approach the discussion. Yeah, right. I am. Get some intellectual standards, Cupcake. Yes, I agree that. No, I'm kidding. But seriously, you know, they do need improvement. Yeah, like, I agree that if, if he felt like that he needed to vent, that, that throwing something like that up, um, as a response and, and incorporating it into the four part series I don't think he should have because 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 that makes it part of, of of his response to what you were saying if he wanted to do that separately then I would not have had a problem with it and left the other three as parts one, two, and three of an actual response to you I would agree there um, okay, um, I think that's about it, and before, I want to say before we end this recording, um, thank you all for participating, I really appreciate your input, and, uh, thank you again. This was a very interesting experience. Not a problem. No problem. If you ever, if you ever need to join something like this again, remember that Zelda holds my leash. Alright. Alright, <laughs> right, I'm going to stop the recording... Once right, my system again. catches up. Later. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, Jacob, what you think about what you think about? <laughs>